What is going on everyone? My name is Mo and today I'm going to show you how I composited this photo in Adobe Photoshop right after the intro. All right, no time to waste. Let's start with the backdrop. So I went to this website, stocksnap.io, and I downloaded this photo to um, use it as a backdrop of this composite. Now, the first thing I did within this photo, I did not like this area. It just didn't match. And if I had the car sitting right here, it would look so awkward having this. It just didn't match. So what I did, I selected this area, I flipped it, and just got it to the left side. And I've applied a mask to just blend it in. Now I wasn't really worried about this area because that's where the car will sit on top. All right, cool. And uh, well, I added that later on, but it's worth showing it to you. And that's basically a smoke. And um, I usually do that just to separate the background from the car or the subject. All right, so let's start with the base exposure of the car. And that's this one right here. And as you can see, that background is visually noisy. It's so busy, and that's why I decided to composite this photo. Otherwise, I would have left it there, right? So um, I applied a mask. I removed the background, and well, I removed the background plus the um, yeah. Well, we had the background showing off from the window here, but I'll show you how to add that back in a bit. Now that looks cool, not really. Uh, we have a green grass and a yellow grass at the background, but that's okay. We will fix it in a bit. Now, I was more concerned about this area. And if you've been following along, you know, I, I get rid of reflections using CPL filters. I'll leave a link to one of my videos at the description below. So I added that exposure and I added a mask just to mask in this area, which I wanted to remove that reflection from. That looks so smooth, but there is an issue as well here. I did not extend it entirely. So we have a bit of color shift and a bit of reflection. I, w I wasn't really worried about the reflection, but that color shift just appeared as I color graded. And I'll show you how I sold that in a bit as well. All right, so the next one is all about the rims. Yeah, so they are a bit dark. They're okay, but they're a bit dark. I usually expose for the rims and I add that exposure separately. All right, so now we have this cut out. And um, well, um, I just drew that with a pen tool. And let me, let me just show you how that looks like. So there you go. It's, uh, so I, I, I drew that with a pen tool around that area and, um, and I just brushed in uh, with white. Well, it's actually a bit pinkish. And um, I dropped down the opacity to 68 and that's mainly about it there's one thing about this and um, once you mask out the car or cut the car using the pen tool you have these highlights from the previous exposure i added a curve and just darkened that just a little bit there you go all right now moving onward i wanted to match the colors within this photo to the background because they just don't match at all right so in order to match these colors you would need a cool technique i'm not sure what it's called but i called it a color match i'll leave a link to one of the videos explaining this in the description below so let me show it to you it's a gray layer on and uh, there's a hue and saturation layer on top of it that boosts the saturation but most importantly when you look at this photo right here you would see that these, which are the greens, doesn't match this right here. And what you have to do is you can use different tools for this. I use the selective color. And um, if I enable this, you can see that I tried matching that as much as I could. It's not bad. It's okay. But it does the job. Now, if I disable this right here, you'd see that I've almost matched the colors. If I go to the selective color, I basically adjusted the yellows, the greens, and uh, the whites, and the neutrals. I then added a um, color lookup, and that's one of my LUTs. I'll leave a link to my um, one of the videos explaining the LUTs in the description below. Have a look at it. I uh, provide these for free. 
All right, moving onwards, I added a channel mixer just to desaturate these uh, the portion of the photo. Just leave the car out out of the desaturation. It's a channel mixer with a uh, yeah, red filter and an opacity of 23%. I then added another color uh, lookup um, LUT, and that's one of the default ones that came in with Photoshop. I believe that's the Kodak 5205 Fuji 3510. Um, yeah, just to give an overall grade to the photo. Cool. I then added a bit of camera raw magic. Now, if I enable this, look at that. Hoo -ah. All right, let me show it to you. Let me just open that up. All right, so here are the settings. I warmed up the photo just a tad. I dropped the highlights because I thought the highlights were just too much. Uh, there you go. I added a bit of clarity and vibrance. And uh, of course, I added a bit of sharpening and a mask of 55. And I added a bit of noise reduction as well. All right, and moving onwards with the HSL, I uh, played around just a little bit with the greens, not too much. I just um, changed the color or the hue of the greens, made them a bit more of a yellowish. And as in for the split toning, I um, added some blues to the shadows and uh, yellows to the highlights. So these are the values. And then I added a bit of grain to the photo. I thought of experimenting a bit with the grains. I haven't been doing that lately. And I kind of like how it kind of came along. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much it. All right, in terms of the uh, calibration, I did a bit of shifts within the colors. It was mainly within the green and the blues. That's about it. All right, moving onwards. Remember when I said I kind of screwed up here? You see that color shift between this area and that area? So I added a new layer and I just painted it with red and changed the blending mode to color and played a bit with the opacity until I kind of matched these two. All right, so carrying on the final kind of color grade over here. Well, this layer is funny because, you know, I was, I'm always in a hurry and I always tend to... Um, yeah, leave spots like these that I forget to brush at the beginning and that's just to touch them up. I just started doing that. Don't judge me. And on top of that, if you see the rims over here with, uh, yeah, you would notice that there is a kind of green hue over here. And that's why I added the color balance down there, there just to correct that hue issue that I have across the rims. There you go nice and easy and to wrap it up i just added a color balance and overall to the photo it's very subtle but it just added that bit of warmth to the photo and voila that's it we've reached the end of this video um i'm not a fan of well not really not a fan but uh, i'm not really good with composites as you can tell but I thought to give it a try and um, uh, thought of sharing the experience with you guys. Now, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to this awesome channel because there's a lot coming up your way, boys. Oh, yeah. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, too. Be good, boys. And I'll see you in the next video.